Welcome to Adventures in Crafting, Episode 2. A tiny tale. I'll get into that in a minute. But first, I'd like to point out that March is Women's History Month and Social Worker Month. So if there's an important woman in your life, feel free to say thank you. Appreciate her accomplishments. And if you've been feeling affected by what's been going on in the world the last month or the last couple of years, social workers are there to help you. They're altruistic people who want to make sure that you are in a good place mentally and emotionally. Don't be afraid to talk to somebody because they're not afraid to talk to you. Now, Tiny here uh, is a miniature I created on Hero Forge, printed on an El Mars Pro 2, and I'm going to be painting with Army Painter Speed Paints. Now, this is not a sponsored video. None of those companies have given me anything. Everything was purchased with my own money. But I want to tell you, I made some mistakes, one of which was using a wet palette. Army Painter Speed Paints are not meant to be diluted. The little bit of moisture that's in the wet palette is designed to keep more opaque paints viable longer so that while you're using them they don't dry out. By putting the speed paints on that, unbeknownst to me, it added just enough water to dilute them, ruining their basic property. That being to have really dark recesses, bright highlights, and midpoints in between. What I inadvertently did was made a glaze out of each one of them, a very thinned paint that gives the color but no variation in its tone. Another mistake I made was the black base coat with the white azimuthal highlight prime. That is great when you're trying to use opaque paints. It worked exceptionally well. Army Painter highly recommends that you paint the entire model white. If I had done that, more of the model would be visible in ways that would be more interesting to the eye. And had I not diluted it, I wouldn't have made a glaze, but would have used the Army Painter speed paints in the way they were intended, which would have given me the variations in color I looked for. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. So please, please, please do not make the mistakes I made. Now Tiny here is played by a social worker and a woman who is important to me. She never thought that she would be a sci-fi enthusiast or a role player ever, but after a couple of years of listening to my friends and I carry on at the table laughing and cussing and nearly avoiding destruction, she decided to give it a shot. And this is what she made, an 11 foot tall reptile person who's very strong, tough, powerful, intelligent. This character Tiny has taken on Norse giants in Asgard and stood on the hull of a spaceship hurtling through the stars whilst shooting at enemies. She's helped topple horrible dictators and defeat terrible monsters. Tiny is truly an amazing character played by a truly amazing person. Now if you like what you're hearing, hit the thumbs up button. If you don't like what you're seeing, hit the subscribe button so you can trash me in the comments. I'd like to go ahead and apologize too for my film quality. Being new to this, I, uh, I'm trying to make sure that I can get as much of the action in as possible. Whatever action that actually is. Unfortunately, I still haven't mastered my cinematography skills yet. I'm sure in due time I will. And if you have any suggestions for that, feel free to leave them below. Now, I'm trying to go through and make sure I hit every single point even the places that are black, so that at least I know I painted it fully and give it my due diligence. From the little toenails to the armor that's underneath the arms and legs where you really aren't going to see it. That's what I'm doing here, the bone color. It looks pretty neat on them. Unfortunately, my camera skills are a little bit lacking presently. Hopefully the next video will be better in that and you can see more of the nitty gritty details. Now, since I screwed up so royally on this, I'm going to do it again. The next video will actually be of me painting something that has a gray base coat with a white zenithal highlight because the gray will allow the colors to shine through but still give the variation in color that I think the model deserves so that it's shaded at the bottom. Hopefully you'll tune into that one as well because I think it will be a little more interesting. I'm going to try some different camera angles, maybe some better lighting, do the things I can to make this video worth watching 
because you, my audience, matters. Now here I'm just going through, again, hitting places where I think I've missed, touching up the firearms because Tiny carried so many, and explosives. Oh my goodness, the explosives. That was pretty much Tiny's answer to, I don't know, half the problems. Well, let's throw a bomb at it. Oh goodness. Here I've switched to Gunmetal Gray for the sword and Matte Black for basing out the rim of the base. This is a pretty common style and uh, just about any crafter out there will tell you that this is what you need to do. Now as the painting is coming to an end here, I give it one last look and give you a few glamour shots to go along with it. Oh, Tiny. Such an amazing character. Such bad focus. Epic battle pose. Great way to end the episode. Well, thank you for watching and go have an adventure in crafting.